Hey everyone, I have not done a personal rant for a little while and I feel like the time has come. I am on going on a windy walk though, so I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm also out of London in a sleepy town and a nice old lady just chatted to me <laughs> to see if I was one of the new people who'd moved in down the road. And <laughs> it's so funny when you live in big cities, if you're uh, a Londoner or a New Yorker or any of those where people barely give you the time of day to have a bit of a chat on the street. And she said she's just being nosy. So I may get stopped again, who knows? But I'm walking away from the houses and over to where I can overlook the water on a big hill and so bear with the wind people. But it felt like an apt time to talk about the concept of letting go. And I think if you've, li if you've listened to some themes of mine recently, I've been exploring this idea of like, rather than relentless hustle, which I love and I enjoy, and I think there's something to be said for relentless work ethic, there's also something to be said. I mean, there's so many books and so much information and some of the highest achievers. Gabby Bernstein, for example, talks about how the universe has your back and this concept of letting go into, you know, a sort of a trusting place. So it's less about hustle in the traditional sense of the word of, of pushing and driving hard, but more of a, a letting go and a sinking into that, you know, the possibilities that we might not be able to even plan with our finite human minds. And if we just are sticking to some kind of goal setting methodology where we just go, so this is what I've set out for myself in the next five, 10 years, you have no fucking clue what's actually possible in the next 10 years. Like you could actually be limiting yourself by playing small with the, the tools that you have at the moment, but actually you have no idea what tools you'll have or the way you'll be thinking or what possibilities are actually out there. And I've reflected on this a little bit way, way, way back when I barely had an education and I was stuck at home being a parent just thinking, God, let me find some purpose and fulfillment and do something. I started out volunteering in a youth club one night a week and it was pretty well funded. It was very urban and, and treating, uh, it was treating, it was supporting some of the most deprived neighborhoods in South London. They didn't really need me though from a resources point of view because I didn't come in as any kind of expert. I was just a body in the room to, su to support activities and whatever. And I remember I would always have the next plan. So I'd have one, a one year plan and it, not even a plan. It would be a dream or a picture. It wouldn't be like actual goal setting in the way that I'm able to do now. It would be more of a, okay, what do people know in the youth work scene? Like Google research, what's out there? What's the language I need to use in the UK? What, what's the language of, you know, the, the youth offending system and all that stuff. And I'm saying that not to go through my whole career point by point, but there's no fucking way that I could have planned or goal set it or hustled even for what I'm doing now, right? Which is speaking on international stages, running my own business. I'm in the process of writing a book, like all this sort of stuff. Like, there's no way that I could have made that sort of plan into what I'm doing now back then. I just couldn't have. And so we do, there is this concept, and I fully believe that we can limit ourselves by just thinking about our own goal setting or getting too attached to what we think our plans are. When actually, when we can let go into the flow of things and be open to the, the, the possibilities that we can't even plan ourselves, there's just so much more possibility out there. So there's something about connecting into the source and being guided. And I say this really carefully because like, uh, you know, you guys know this, I was, I was raised religious. I don't like the, we were raised on the, the, you know, this is God's will and God knows and you don't and trust and listen. And obviously we would trust and listen to authorities that were supposed to be God's mouthpieces that turned out to be pretty toxic. And so I have this kind of, you know, healthy suspicion or a bit of a good critical mind. Let's put it that way. I've got some good critical thinking 
about people's intentions or about this whole trust idea because in my opinion or my experience my conditioning suggests that when you trust uh, you can be taken advantage of now each and every one of you are going to have a whole host of of trauma you know connected conditionings around trust and that could be you could have had a very normal sort of safe life but still you may have been hurt by people like that's just the way the world goes right you can be hurt by a parent a sibling school kids the a whole host of things right and, and not to mention relationships which is often where we repeat cycles of those small toxic experiences that we wouldn't maybe put down to extreme trauma but we would put down to our conditioning about the way we live our lives so of course i'm interested always in the how question i'm beginning to understand that the skills that got me to where i am now won't be the skills that will get me into full enjoyment relaxation and really thriving i have full gratitude for the fact that the the skills that i do have have gotten me to where i am now and those skills are very much survival skills right because of a tricky past i've and you guys know this apply this to you so if it's a, and i think a lot of my audience will understand the survival mechanism excuse the wind people survival is very much our need to live right and in order to live we can do incredible things so this holiday i was on a mountain and we're going to use that mountain metaphor um but i literally was i went to wales and we were going to climb snowden which is one of the highest peaks apparently in the uk or perhaps greater in europe i have no idea i'm obviously not a mountaineer right and so we we climbed this peak and through little research we thought that there would be a fork in the road and that we would take sort of the medium peak but it turned out that the fork that we thought was the fork was a bit earlier than the one we were supposed to be looking out for which meant we ended up taking one of the most dangerous peaks that it says uh, you should be very experienced and have equipment in order to scale and at the beginning of course it's just uh, walking up a little bit uh, a little bit craggy whatever and then by the time we're getting to the top we're literally on our hands and knees like literally climbing so we're scaling hands feet we get to the peak and we're literally like oh my god i keep saying saying literally but that's because i'm just like a child and, and, and it was in total panic but what i'm saying this for is because of the survival metaphor which was i couldn't go back by the time we got in too far the mist had risen and to go back would be just as difficult as going forward or worse right and so you can't go back but you must go forward because to not do either of those things means death right and and death could be depression leading a mediocre life feeling suicidal whatever those things might be it's not a happy place and so survival is needing to focus in all of your adrenaline and your tension and focus in on one step in front of the other you're not thinking about thriving you're not thinking about oh what music is playing or let's just enjoy our food here for a little while food is fuel right so if we sat on a peak it was so that we wouldn't faint so that we would eat a little bit so that we could keep going moving forward so it's relentless forward action that's my little picture now that's fresh in my mind of what survival looks like and so translate that into your life for me relentless forward action allowed me to build a life from not having an education into one where i had opportunity i had possibility and i had things that i could achieve i could now get a job i could build a uh, create an income i could do things that weren't even conceivable in our world view from the past which was that the world was going to end all the time it's a great view here you guys cannot appreciate it because all you're hearing is the wind but it's actually a great view and i thought it was apt for within my own head to be able to talk about this concept of letting go now back to the mountain if you are in survival mode and you are like hold on 
one foot, one leg, make sure the rocks aren't going to fall beneath you. Everything is dangerous. Um, things were slippery wet and my shoes weren't that grippy, which meant that if I hit the wrong sort of slab of stone, there were loose stones, I could slip. And so there's, it's this kind of hyper vigilant awareness because, you know, once night falls, we are fucked, right? If darkness sets in, we don't know how far we've got to go. Um, if it gets dark, we will not be able to see our way. We do not have head torches. We did have a torch, but we would have had to, to hold it in one of our hands that were crucial for climbing. It would have been a virtual impossibility. And so that's essentially what survival is. Hypervigilance at any turn. If you trust or you let go, that rock could slip from within you and mean certain death. And even if you start overriding that, as I did with logic. So I started learning and educating myself about logically was that the case so as things became more safe and i became more able to to look after myself i could educate myself i became a psychotherapist and a coach to understand triggers and patterns and all the rest of it so i could logically tell myself that i was safe so i'd be like i'm safe but what ended up happening was i just channeled that that survival mechanism of relentless forward action into my education into my career now you may see that's fuck say you may say that that's fucking awesome because it's like, well, that drove you. And essentially, adversity to advantage is turning the survival in the, in the negative context of barely keeping your head afloat and literally thinking that danger is at every turn to one of relentless forward action in uh, growth and in learning and in building a business. Now, yes, I have full uh, gratitude for being able, learning how to channel that adversity into the ability to channel it into building something. So I have total gratitude and I think the first steps to getting yourself out of that more dark dangerous place when you have those survival skills is to use those survival skills on something that's going to build a more worthwhile you. So channeling you uh, whatever it is meditation uh, exercise connection with people relentlessly as a survival tool because you know that if you don't you could fall backwards and if that's fear-based who cares like that 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 was my starting point and that's fine because it's hard to fix everything at once it's hard to create new skills and tools and a different path and uh, have energy for it and know what to bloody do right so start somewhere, start somewhere. You've got the, 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 the skills and the energy, the anger, the rage, whatever it might be. Channel that into volunteering, putting yourself out there, educating yourself, all of the things that will act as the building blocks to move you in a different direction. But what I wanna talk about, I wanted to give you that foundation so that you really recognize if you're the type of person that has the survival skills, uh, if, if, if that's your method for getting through life, right? If it's your method for getting through life, I would welcome you to reflect on that with me today. And because it's my method, it's my method, survival of the fittest. If I can learn more, be more, do more, then I have edge and I will survive. But what can be hard for me is a certain kind of enjoyment of what I've created, a certain relaxation or, or something around understanding that there's a different method, that there is actually a different way. This isn't the only way. And if we can broaden our horizons to what that way might be, then perhaps the journey can have more of that, more, more, more love, more trust, more pleasure, more joy. Joy, that's the word. That's the word. Perhaps it can have all of those things. Perhaps we are worth all of those things. And perhaps we don't need to hustle to get those things because we, we're actually allowed to have them anyway. Like they're ours for the taking. The universe has our back. Now I am, I've got my toe in the water of some of this kind of spirituality stuff that's out there, this, this consciousness stuff. I'm fascinated by it and I'm currently open. So I'm not here talking as a total expert on any of these topics. There's loads of science. There's loads of, of, of sort of people talking out there about this stuff. So, so research it and go on your own journey. But I want to explain a little bit about my journey and what's 
I don't know, it's, it's acting as a bit of a head fuck. And what prompted me to start this recording was because I have just spent in the mountain climbing and the adrenaline rush sort of element, I've just had the most magical week away with a new boyfriend. I still find it hard to say that. Ah, he's going to listen. Um, <laughs> and so there's letting go as a theme in so many aspects of my life. And so it's letting go into the possibility of, of love and being in love and not controlling the outcome or acting as if the rocks are going to fall out from beneath me at any given moment if I don't put my feet exactly just so emotionally, logically, rationally. Like going through something that is actually a connection and a letting go and a magic with that sense of control and almost paranoia that you need on a mountaintop but you don't need when you're on a country walk, you know, um, with looking into the eyes of someone that you love, you know, you don't, you, you don't need it in the same way. But if that's your skill and that's your setup, then that's what you do. You go, ooh, let me just, what are the red flags? How do I um, see if the rock's gonna fall out from beneath me? So, so there's that aspect. And then work aspect that I've talked about before, which is if I keep using the tools of survival that I did before, I know within me and through everything that I've read that it's going to be a, a road to burnout and I'm not going to actually enjoy the scale that the universe actually has in store for me if I try and overthink and micromanage every aspect of it. So it's so much learning and then what's interesting is I'm in a kind of two day this weekend transition phase so I've come back from kind of the bubble of being away where I was we were meditating every morning I was reading this amazing book called The Surrender Experiment and I love that title actually because some of you will know that I talk about experimenting with well-being tools and what works for you just experiment with it um, test it don't just be like oh I can't meditate therefore none of this stuff works it's like we have to be our own science experimenter god i can't talk it's, it's so weird not being at work for a while my language shit uh, hopefully you get the vibe though I'm, I'm in that transition point so the surrender experiment appealed to me it was recommended to me after i went on this um shamanic uh, journeying retreat that i've talked about and the idea of an experiment is all right Maybe I don't want to surrender. This whole word surrender freaks me out because it has Christian connotations. Maybe this stuff isn't going to be right for me. But there's enough evidence and there's enough people talking about the, the end result that is so appealing to me that my soul is connected to the idea of experimenting with surrender. And this is just my own tricky way. My, it's the way I trick my brain into doing things that I'm like, would have before maybe had a fixed mindset about and been like, nope, don't like the word surrender. It has too many connotations of my cult upbringing. Surrender, forgiveness, these sorts of words imply that I don't have control and that you have control over me. When actually, if I just let go of my attachment to the meaning that I put there because of my past and just go, huh, words are words, we get to give them our own meaning. And what is the essence of these books and, and, and talks and, and kind of information that I'm, I'm gathering? And the essence is letting go, surrender, whatever those words mean to you, but I get to experiment with it. So this is what I love. This now has bought me in because I'm like, okay, this I can do. I can look at this as, as an experiment. And over the next few months, I can experiment with falling into, letting go of, connecting to source, being guided by intuition, not just driven by my force of nature, right? And again, th this, is, this isn't about an extreme of one or the other. I need to, I've had the extreme of controlling anxiety, pushing forward in a particular way. So for me, being open to a different way of being is really challenging, it's confronting, because it makes me think about stuff from the past. And I guess it's scary, because that idea of the rocks falling out from under you, and the fear attached to that is that, that if the rocks fell out, I would be back 
at my worst rock bottom or back in the worst place that I ever was. And I have to override that by going, I have so much knowledge and information, compassion, connections, friendships, skills than I did before. And so even if the worst were to happen and some rocks were to fall out from beneath my feet, I actually am fully capable. I wouldn't be back in the same position. I would be in a different position, one where I would grow and learn and probably be able to test out all of this stuff because you don't get to test stuff in, in well, you get to practice in safe zones and you get to reflect in peacetime, but you don't really get to be tested unless you're in it, right? It's all good and well, the theory of this stuff, but unless you're in it, you simply don't get to test it and bring it on, right? Bring it on. If we can be get through some of the things that we've been through in the past, then what's to make us so scared of getting through something else, you know? So live a little, live a little. So of course, my questions to myself, all right, all right, I get the concept, I get the theory. How the fuck do I let go? How, how, how? How do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? And how is always in the small detail of every day. It isn't, in my opinion, just one big epiphany of like, do this one step, three step formula, which many Instagrammers would like to have you believe, um, and your life will be changed. Because it isn't that. It's a slow knowing and reflecting about yourself and only you know your journey, right? So how have I been letting go? One way is by having going for new experiences that aren't work related. So the fact that I went on this trip, that I took some days out to go on this uh, this, this uh, wild rights uh, shamanic thing, the fact that actually a whole year ago I went to an extreme like sort of free love hippie um, festival called Togetherness, which I mean, and it was on the the land of. Um, uh, you know, the cult leader Osho, you know, you guys, only some people are going to get this. If you've watched Netflix, there's some shit about, about it out there. But my God, that pushed me out of my comfort zone. And that was a year ago. And I guess what I was trying to do was to test my resolve that I was strong enough within different environments and didn't have to hide in work mode or, you know, uh, education mode or parent mode, because those are like the three hats that I've probably gotten, gotten the most comfortable with over the years. But actually, I mean, I am not an adrenaline junkie, but I climbed a mountain and I went on one of the longest zip wires across a canyon, which is insane. But as the Surrender Experiment book outlines, it's a kind of all right, this opportunity has showed up and it's kind of going, all right, let me see what happens. Let me see what information is here. But let me ruthlessly reflect on myself and my own behavior. And what was interesting while I was away with my boyfriend, we were, I was finally, oh my God, able to kind of settle into the comfortableness of being in this relationship and kind of the idea of making plans and saying good words to each other and, you know, relaxing into his company. And for, my, for many of you, maybe this, this shit sounds easy, but my nickname is Boomerang, right? Because it's just like, I go back and forth a little bit. I come in close and I move away and I'm like, I don't need nobody, you know? I don't need nobody, I can do this on my own. And bless him, he's so grounded that he's able to just kind of observe that and, and, and we're able to reflect on these things together. And so full immersion, totally letting go, reading these books, talking, meditating, all this stuff. And I guess we were, t- we were taken out of the pressure bubble, right? And then we return last night to, to his environment and just this kind of transition zone before going back to London and to the real world. And my comments start getting a bit like, jokey, pushbacky, you know, don't need you kind of, oh yeah, but we'll see if we're still together or we'll see, I don't know, like, huh, you know, just playing it cool, God. But the difference is I'm able to ruthlessly reflect on my own behavior and actually say to him, 
God, my I'm I'm just really being bitchy right now. Like there's this something in my voice. Like and he and he's like, yeah, what's like what's going on for you? So we're able to separate out my stuff from his stuff. God, I so did not intend to talk about relationships. Jesus Christ, vulnerability, man. But it's a key component of my practice ground at the moment for this letting go concept. It's just a key place where so many old triggers and things are, are, are playing out. And because I'm probably for the first time in a fully, well, it feels like a healthy place, I'm able, I'm safe enough to talk about these things. And the, the theory of this stuff in therapy, for example, just isn't quite the same as testing it out in the day-to-day -day life with somebody. And I do think there's a place for both. And I do think we need to reflect sometimes privately before we can be comfortable enough to reflect with a witness that we're also uh, sort of intimately connected with. Because there's just another level of, of vulnerability within that. And we sometimes need to educate that person on what we're going through and explain that it actually isn't a reflection on them and somebody who's confident within themselves and maybe has a bit of understanding and self-awareness is really going to appreciate that information about how they can be with us and what's the best way to to support us and of course it goes both ways right so there's letting go there and i also just felt the tension of coming back that transition into a work environment and I felt really stressed for a little minute and really afraid and all my old habits of like do 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 like okay let me just get organized I gotta do all this shit in order to get through the next week get back into hustle mode get back on top of work and sort of a fear-based survival of like if I don't do this stuff then I'm gonna miss something I'm gonna miss something something's gonna be fucked something's gonna be fucked like that kind of energy Oh, which is the opposite of what I'm trying to get to. It's the opposite. And, and so I'm like, I'm trying to replicate. I'm trying to think. And really, I need to feel into. I'm trying to think, how do you do <laughs> this letting go thing? And this universe has your back thing. And allow that to cover you in the real world. When you run a business. When you're a parent when you just got a city lifestyle, when you, all these, whatever, excuses in a way. How do you translate these elements? And I kind of know what's true, but the habits are hard to break. So I know that dedicating time in my morning to, and the, the routine could be slightly different, but to connect to self connect to source the universe whatever that might be so whether it's writing down some intentions walking it's getting away just from doing mode and firmly this is what all the book says what all people's experiences are saying is that it's about being letting go is a state of being it's it's just it's how we can show up in the world that has this energy of trust and knowledge that the universe has a much bigger plan and I don't mean that in an exactly linear way but like there's so much more energetic forces out there that can propel us to places that we had no idea even existed if we can be connected to source and for me that looks like in my trial and error approach i'm sure please if you have comments about how to do this much fucking better we are open to learning we are always open to learning and sharing within the community but for me it's getting away from waking up making coffee and opening my laptop and all the successful, many of the successful people out there who, who I listen to on podcasts and are interviewed, they talk about that, that sort of holy hour, as Robin Sharma calls it, or their morning routine, or making space to create conscious decisions about their day. And so that means, fuck technology. And I'm like, holy hell. I have tried to just do the the 
alarm in my room, the old school alarm rather than my phone, but a, a full hour is, is tricky. I probably managed sort of 30 minutes to not turn my phone on and that sort of thing. Um, but that's, this is aspirational, this is what I want to get to, and this is why I'm doing this talk, because I want to get you guys in the messy middle of figuring it out. I don't just want to come to you with the perfect formula, I want us to struggle together and to compile our learning and reflect together and take the steps necessary to building that beautiful life where we can thrive and really experience joy and actually appreciate where our survival has fucking gotten us, you know? but allow ourselves, give ourselves permission to be in peacetime. We can build stuff and be active while enjoying all the gifts that the world actually has for us. The world is not a dark place. As a friend of mine recently said to me, isn't the world a dark place? And I was like, I choose to look at the world in an optimistic fashion one where it's on our side and where I assume the best in people until they give me evidence otherwise rather than the other way around. However, my full body and my full being doesn't always believe that. So my brain knows it and there's certain actions in certain parts of my life that, that life that totally get it. But deep down in the trauma places and the trigger zones, my body still wants to be in survival. It wants to take charge. It wants to take control. For all the times that it wasn't in control in the past, the kind of message that my body internally is left with is that when I'm in control, I make things happen and I stay safe. Me. And there's this idea for me that I don't want to need or rely on anyone isn't very connecting. I want to connect, I want to be vulnerable, I want to be real, but I don't want to rely on anyone. And bless, my boyfriend said, well that's good, he's like, we shouldn't need each other. I know you don't need me, I don't need you, but we want to share our lives with each other. We want to share our lives. We can rely on ourselves and we want it to be enriched by supporting each other. And I thought that was pretty fucking beautiful. So I was like, that gives me space to allow myself to, to, to ease in, to rely on myself, and to know that sometimes we don't have to do everything. And there's been little moments, little pockets of sweet, deep relief in knowing that someone has my back. And if we think of that times a, a, a trillion or whatever, right? And that's what the universe is there for us, whether we're in a relationship or not in a relationship. I haven't been in one properly since I got divorced almost three years ago. Um, and, and I think I needed that. I needed to learn about myself. So it's not about a person having our back, although there is a challenge for some of us who've been in survival mode, not just of giving help, because that can be part of our survival too. If I can help enough people and sort them out, then I feel purposeful. But actually the challenge can be in receiving help. Jesus Christ, that's revolutionary in my book, right? So actually allowing somebody to look after me or just care for me or to say lovely things or to be there for me. Deep down, I sometimes resist that because I'm like, oh, fuck, that feels so good. What if I start relying on that stuff and I don't have the, and it takes away from the resources that I've built through blood, sweat and tears to give that to myself. When, why can't, why does it have to be one or the other? I saw this great Mind Valley conversation, uh, they, they Mind Valley podcast uh, and they do Mind Valley events. I can't remember the name of the, the couple, it was a couple they were interviewing about relationships. Um, and Vision, who, who started Mind Valley, was saying, why can't we have it all? We have these belief systems that you have this or this. You either have a successful career or you're able to successfully parent. You either travel or you're stable. You either this or you're that. You fill in the blanks. You're either this or you're that. These are the belief systems we have. So I, I think I had a belief system that was I'm either self-reliant and resourceful or someone else controls my life, right? And I don't want that, so that means I must be fully self-reliant and look after myself. I also had a belief system that if I want to be successful in work and create impact and generate resources that can help support some of my generation who are still struggling financially, which is part of my, my why, I guess, 
that if I do that, I must sacrifice the other. God, the word sacrifice, Jesus. God, I was raised up on that. The idea that you must sacrifice your happiness in, for the good of others. You must, you know, anyone who has a remotely Christian concept of how they were raised or probably other religious uh, aspects um, around sacrifice. There's this idea that if I want this one thing, I must sacrifice these things. And sacrifice, I don't look at it as, yes, you have, yes, like sometimes I've sacrificed sleep or I've sacrificed social time in order to, to, to build a business and to hustle and do the, the work, you know, and, and that's probably the more appropriate use of the word sacrifice. But I think the belief system way down is that I don't deserve, so, so if I am a good person and tick these boxes for myself and other people, I must sacrifice having a, a loving partner in my life because maybe that's just not what was intended for me. Maybe I'm supposed to bite down, suffer a little bit in order to create impact. And we get this all the time. We get, you know, what do we get? The struggling artist. We get, you know, these ideas around that if you want to create something amazing, then you must um, struggle. And yes, you must struggle, but suffering is a choice, you know? And it's recognizing the seasons in your life. So it's recognizing the seasons. And I'm just in this state of transition from one set of rules of survival with the knowledge and awareness that there's another way to live and be and let go and when it does happen when I'm able to connect into this source and let go and sometimes it's just for brief moments brief measures of time I know it's right it feels right it feels like this is the other way and and what's interesting is then the evidence surrounding that is that everything's fine no rocks have, have, have sort of crumbled from beneath my feet if anything a smoother path has probably shown up to allow me to walk safer, happier, with more joy, but also with adventure, with the full spectrum of emotion and goodness that is available in life that we sometimes blinker out of the way when we're in full on survival hustle mode. So my takeaways are for you, experiment. So the surrender experiment. So experiment with surrendering experiment with trusting experiment with connecting to source and uh, and that just could be uh, meditation being reiki energy vibrations there's so many ways there's so much information out there now on how you can uh, kind of higher your vibration level and connect into your intuition and trust me this does not is not religious for me in the least it's just about science and energy and vibration and and just stuff that i've experienced through uh, shamanic healing and all these like i just i've said this before i don't attach to one way of thinking as that being truth i think there's i think we're ready for different things at different times in our life that then work for us and that doesn't mean that that now needs to be your religion which is why i love the concept of experimenting because it means we test and put ourselves out there in different ways not attached to the overarching meaning that other people might give to it but it's just our journey just ours nobody else's like i wouldn't i can't say do this exact formula of go to this festival shamanic healing do this reiki thing do this thing i can all i can say is opening myself and putting myself out there to these experiences allowed me to let go of some stuff it wasn't quite right for me i wasn't quite into the free love thing <laughs> and the, you know but i was into the the connection and the belonging and the learning in so many other ways so experiment with surrender is my first takeaway my second one is try and focus on the being, not the doing. So rather than the to-do list, have a to-be list. Like, who do I want to be in the world? Who do I want to be in relationship? And the, the best thing, oh, the best and most hopeful thing that I find about this possibly healthy relationship 
is we're determined to hold each other accountable. So I've said what I want to be held accountable for. I never want to be someone who, who nags or moans and he's said what he wants to be accountable for and we hold each other to account in looking after ourselves as well and I mean physically and mentally. So hold yourself to account. Hold yourself to account. I've got this beautiful view. I've, 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 we've lost the wind now and it's just peaceful. It's peaceful. So do a to-be list, not a to-do list. And finally, cultivate, keep cultivating curiosity and hopefulness because I'm, I get scared. I do. I'm not going to, I can admit that. But I'm also so excited because I've felt the little glimpses of what it can be like to, to let go. And then the amount of random people that I know who I've randomly run into on the most crowded station or or busiest part of London that I'm never usually in and then I run into someone I mean like they talk about magic and I don't want to get all woo woo but shit starts happening shit starts happening when you take this approach of connect to source be not do oh I've never let me challenge that let me challenge my own thinking be and do but be first who do you want to be and then don't just sit on your ass and just expect that the world is going to show up for you. That's the, the bit of balance in this whole like the secret kind of concept that I don't agree with at all. And I don't think was the intention at all. Some people just use it in that way. It's but there is magic in just being and showing up in a way that connects to something greater. Uh, and it's a relief to not have to hustle or do every single thing and there's different ways to, to to go about it so please research experiment be and show up with total curiosity there's an amazing next phase of your life waiting keep going thanks for listening